In this video, let's talk about the differences between ordered and synchronous modeling modes in Solid Edge. Since you're watching a series of videos on Solid Edge for SolidWorks users, I assume you're already familiar with the history-based method in SolidWorks. Ordered modeling in Solid Edge is the same exact idea with features in a list that are driven by sketches and sketches that are driven by dimensions and relationships. With synchronous modeling, how you create the geometry for parts is very similar to how you create things in ordered mode. The biggest difference is how you edit things. Synchronous modeling is essentially an extension of direct edit methods, so you edit the model by manipulating faces directly. The easiest way to understand this is to think of editing a sketch. To edit the sketch, you drag underdefined elements, you change dimensions, you add geometrical relationships, and so on. Synchronous technology enables you to edit the 3D part in almost exactly the same way that you would edit a sketch. But instead of dragging lines and arcs, you drag faces. You still use dimensions and geometric relationships. Synchronous edits can be made in two ways, by changing dimensions, or by moving faces with the steering wheel. The steering wheel is an interface device that you'll become more familiar with. One of the huge advantages of synchronous is that you can use synchronous techniques to edit imported geometry as if it were native. Apply dimensions and relations to the imported model faces. Some ideas in synchronous sketching are different from typical order of operations in SolidWorks. First, in synchronous, you are never in or out of a sketch. You just activate a sketch tool like the line command and sketch on the active plane or activate a new plane. Use F3 or the lock symbol to toggle plane activation. The software manages sketch data into features in the Pathfinder. All sketch elements on the same plane go into a single sketch feature. If you sketch on a different plane, those sketch elements will go into a different sketch feature. By the word feature, I mean entry in the pathfinder. These could probably be thought of as folders for holding sketch data rather than actual features. Within the synchronous sketch, everything else should be familiar, aside from dimensioning, which we'll talk about in a minute. To extrude or revolve, select a face or an enclosed sketch region. The steering wheel will appear. To extrude, just pull the arrow. To revolve, reposition the steering wheel to the axis of revolution and drag the torus. Synchronous works largely based on selections rather than picking a toolbar icon and working through a dialog. Once a sketch or subset of a sketch is used to create geometry, the sketch elements that were used to create that geometry go into a collector or a folder called used sketches. These sketches are no longer needed, but it is recommended that you keep them for reference. You can restore them so they can be used again or used as a part of a new sketch. This is where some SolidWorks users start getting nervous because sketches are no longer used to drive part geometry after the features are initially created. If you just think of the faces of the model as being editable like a sketch, the sketches become no longer necessary. You might have noticed also that as you create geometry, features are being added to the Pathfinder. Although this looks familiar, this is very different from what you're used to. First, the order of the features does not matter. You can reorder and reorganize these features however you want, and it has no effect on the model. Second, the features are really just a collection of faces. If you want to edit that entire feature or collection, you can do that. Or you can edit just a couple of faces from the feature. Or you can combine faces from different features and edit them together. This is all stuff that you could never do in SolidWorks. It's an entirely different way of thinking about things. And yes, that's a good thing. Making a change to something can happen in a couple of different ways. First, 
make the selection of the face or faces you want to change. And if it's a linear move, use the arrow on the steering wheel to move your selection of faces. A dimension box will show up. This is a differential dimension, so it just shows you the size of the change or the distance that you're going to move the faces. It doesn't show you the final size of the item that you're editing. You can enter a number that represents the distance you want to move the selection. The red dimensions are locked, which means that they can only be changed directly by the user. And the blue dimensions are unlocked, which means they can be changed by any method. This is like gray driven dimensions in SolidWorks being equivalent to the blue unlocked dimensions in Solid Edge. And the black driving dimensions in SolidWorks are equivalent to the red locked dimensions in Solid Edge. So if I click on this end face, I can use the steering wheel to drag this face and you'll see that that blue dimension increases in size as well. This is being changed symmetrically because the design intent has the symmetric option turned on. If I turn that off, then I can edit only one side at a time. Likewise, if I change this blue dimension to a locked dimension, now I won't be able to edit with the steering wheel anymore. But notice that I can use my scroll wheel, change the left side or change the right side. And all of this design intent is being changed at the time of the edit rather than being set up beforehand and needing to be edited when you want to make the change. Also, I want to point out this sketch that's in the center of the part. This is what's known as a live section. A live section uses a plane through the part and it's initiated using the live section tool which is on the surfacing tab. In this case, we can select any of the blue lines that are not being controlled by a red dimension. So I could grab this top line of the rib and pull this up and down, or I could grab the width and this is just being controlled by a blue dimension. So this is driven and I can change the width of this. The symmetric option is turned off right now. So if I turn it back on, then both sides of the rib change at once. Notice also that if I change the overall width of the part, these holes move with it because of the 750 dimension on each side. If I were to change this dimension, to a driven dimension and then change the width symmetrically, we can see that the one hole doesn't move. We could grab this hole individually and move it side to side. If you need to make sure that one particular face stays where it belongs, you can switch to the home tab and use the face relate tools. You can create relations between faces in the same way that you create relations between sketch elements, such as perpendicular, parallel, concentric, and so on. To take one particular face and lock it into place, use the ground relation. In this case, I'll just select three faces to ground and accept. Now, no matter how I make these changes, those faces will stay in place. Do not confuse the ground relation with the rigid relation. Rigid will take a set of faces and make them always move together as a fixed group. And finally, I want to show how to angle a face. We'd select on this face, move the steering wheel onto an axis that you want to use to control the angle, and then tilt the face one way or another. Notice that the hole is moving because of the red dimension. You can key in a particular number, select a key point on the model to snap to, or just edit visually. As you might imagine, Synchronous does have some limitations. The biggest is that you can only use it on prismatic geometry. That's planes, cylinders, cones, spheres, torus, etc. 
Any geometry based on splines or lofts should be reserved for ordered history-based methods. You can still use surfaces as well as solids, but you should have a good understanding of how BREP models work. You can also still make drawings from synchronous parts, and synchronous and ordered parts can be mixed in assemblies. In fact, any individual part can be made using both methods combined. You can think of the synchronous section of a part as being an imported body in SOLIDWORKS that sits at the top of the feature manager. And the ordered part is all of the history-based features that you add on top of the imported body. The big difference in Solid Edge is that you can actually edit the imported body as if it were native, as long as it's completely prismatic. For example, you can build the initial main features of a part in synchronous, and then add the small detail features like extruded text, fillets, which Solid Edge calls rounds, and the shell, which Solid Edge calls thin wall, with ordered modeling. So, in summary, Synchronous lets you edit parts as if they were sketches. Synchronous is still parametric because you use dimensions and relationships, but it doesn't use history or feature order. Solid Edge lets you mix synchronous and ordered methods in individual parts and assemblies, and it all works in drawings. Synchronous will make more sense to you as you practice with it more and more. Don't be afraid to get a free version of Solid Edge and start using it. Synchronous simplifies everything and removes the mystery of how to edit parts that someone else has made. Give it a try. Thanks for watching.